Hi, I'm Ben. I'm going to take you through a tutorial on creating confidence intervals for linear regression in Excel. This tutorial is produced for ME4031 students at the University of Minnesota. Prerequisites for this tutorial that you have some basic understanding of Excel, and then you understand what confidence intervals are. The agenda will first define what the independent and dependent variable are for our data set, perform linear regression on that in Excel, and we'll determine the regression coefficients and uncertainties in Excel. We'll create additional columns for the uncertainty values, and then we'll plot all the data sets. For a regression, you start off with some independent variable, x, in this case it's RPM, and from that you try and predict what a y value will be, the dependent variable. So for 400 RPMs, we predict that the torque would be somewhere around 3.5 newton meters. The, the confidence interval, this blue dotted line here, represents the uncertainty in that prediction, so how well we think we'll be able to predict a value from our independent variable. For our Excel example, let's assume that we're calibrating a pressure gauge which takes in a differential pressure and outputs a voltage. We'll move over to Excel. We'll open up a new note, a new workbook here. We'll call this pressure gauge calibration. So what we'll have measured here is some delta P values. Alt enter, which is in units of PSI and also some voltage. Alt enter, which is in units of volts. The data we'll have co collected will be 0 psi, 5 psi, 10, 15, and 20 psi. And the voltage corresponding to those, 0 0.6 volts, 1.4 volts, 2.0 volts, 2.8 volts, and 4.2 volts. We could just perform a linear regression by plotting the data and adding a, a trend line. That only show us the prediction line for it, we won't know the uncertainties of that. To find the uncertainties, we have to perform a regression in Excel itself. Before we can do a regression, we have to define our values, our independent and dependent variable. In this case, we want to predict what the delta P value will be for a given voltage. For regression, we're going to use a function called linist. You input a set of x values, sorry, a set of y, then a set of x values, then we set the constant to be true, that is we don't want the y-intercept to be constrained to zero, and we say true for stats because we want to know all that uncertainty stuff. We get one value here, Linus actually returns an array of values, so it's only showing the first one. To see all the values in the array it returns, we have to highlight two columns by several rows, push F2, then Control shift enter I looked that up in uh, the online help. When I was in the online help, I also found out what all these values mean here. I found this top left one is actually the slope, then it's the standard error of the slope, then it's the R squared value. On the right hand side, we have the y intercept, the standard error of the y, uh, y intercept, and the standard error of the y predicted value, and the degrees of freedom. Now, to find our uncertainties in the regression coefficients, we have to rely on a couple equations. The uncertainty of m is the t value times the standard error of this slope. The delta b is the t value times the standard error of the b. And the, uh, the confidence interval for, for the y data points is the t value times the standard error of the y over the square root of n. This is the linear approximation. This is the larger, more accurate one. We're going to start off using the linear approximation. So first we have to find the t value, which everything uses. It's equal to t inverse. 0.05 for a 95% confidence interval and degrees of freedom are just 3. And we find our delta M value, which is just our T value, times the SEM. Delta B, which is just our T value, times standard error of B. And delta Y, which is our T value, times the standard error of Y, divided by the square root of n. n is the degrees of freedom plus 2. This is our constant uncertainty of y for each of the values we predict. First we have to find what the predicted value will be for each of these x values. We'll call that y predict. y predict is equal to mx plus b, so it's equal to m. That's in absolute reference. We push f4 times x plus b, it's also, which is also an absolute reference, so we push F4 again. Oops. 
quotes, and I accidentally entered a parenthesis which it took care of. <clears throat> so the, the, these are all the y predicted values for the given x values here. Now for a y predicted value, we have the uncertainty of the predicted value, which is delta y. So to add a confidence interval, we're going to go y predict plus delta y, and also y predict minus delta y. Delta y. Let me double click to expand both of these. This is just equal then to y predict for that x data point plus some constant delta y over here. Push F4 because that's an absolute reference. Oops. Also, the y the bottom, the lower confidence intervals are y predicted value minus our delta y. We drag and expand those across the board. Then we have four data sets here. We have the raw data for an x value, the y predicted value for an x value, the upper confidence interval for the x value, and the lower confidence interval for the x value. Let's plot this data, see what it looks like. So we're going to add a data set here, we'll call it raw data, the x values for that, and the y value. Another data set called prediction line. The x values for that are the same x data set. But the y values are the y are the y predict values. We have some upper confidence interval, which is going to be our same x values again. The y values that are over here. We're going to have a lower confidence interval, which are those same x values, and the bottom confidence interval. We plot that, pressure gauge calibration. For the x, we have voltage in volts, and on the y, we have delta p. In PSI. Keep that right here. Could turn off the background by double clicking and change that to none. All right, now we only should have one set of data here as points. All the other three sets should be lines. The prediction line should be a solid line. So I'm going to double click on the data set. To set that to a solid line, black, make it heavier. I'm going to turn off the markers. The upper confidence interval, that's going to be a dashed line. We'll make that blue and make that heavier. Turn off the markers. Lower confidence interval will be the same. It'll be a dashed line. It'll be blue. And we'll turn off the markers. There we have our, our calibration curve for the gauge. Uh, this the one thing we're missing on this calibration curve is the y prediction line. Uh, the trend line would have given that to us. We could add a text box with the m and b values here, or I could just add a trend line to this data set. Add the equation in our squared value. See, it's exactly the same as the predict line we found, so I'm just going to get rid of that guy. So we have our our linear confidence interval and our prediction line on our plot. There we've just made a calibration curve for a linear pressure gauge in Excel. Other resources available to you. Statistical analysis of experimental data available online in the supplemental reading for ME31 by Scott Dahl. Good luck.